Hey boys and girls, this is Mrs. Harris. We're going to be reading this text today, Theodore Roosevelt, The Adventurous President. This is a different kind of read aloud. This is called a close read. We're going to be reading closely this book together, chapters one and two. You're going to need this text in front of you so you can follow along with me while I read to you. You're also going to need a buddy because I'm going to ask you some questions while we're reading. Ready? Let's give it a try. Turn to this page. Theodore Roosevelt, the adventurous president. This is a special kind of text. This is called a biography. A biography is the story of a real person's life that's told by another person. This is a story about one of our actual presidents, Theodore Roosevelt. Let's read some more and learn more about him. Turn to this page, chapter one. Teddy takes the lead. I'm gonna start right here. Actually, let's take a look at this quote here. When you play, play hard. When you work, don't play at all. That's something Theodore Roosevelt said. Think about that. When you play, play hard. When you work, don't play at all. What does that mean to you? Tell your buddy. Great job. When you play, play hard. When you work, don't play at all. Let's start reading. It was early winter and the evening was chilly. The President of the United States wanted to take a walk. He left the White House with a few friends. The President was in the lead. The other men hurried to keep up. They chatted and joked. When the President laughed, his whole body shook. He threw back his head and flashed a mouthful of white teeth. Can you picture that in your mind? Why don't you do it? Let me read to you how Teddy Roosevelt laughs. When the president laughed, his whole body shook. He threw back his head and flashed a mouth full of white teeth. You do it. That's quite a laugh. Let's keep going. The group stayed on a straight path. They never turned left or right. They climbed hills and pushed through bushes. Was there a puddle in the way? They splashed right through it. Straight on they went. Then they stopped at the wooded banks of the Potomac River. Here's Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt stood still for this photo. It was taken in 1900. That was a long time ago. So the president and his friends stopped at the river. Uh-oh. Would the president turn back? No way. He began to undress. So did the others. They piled their clothes on the river bank. Then one by one, they jumped into the water and swam to the other side. This may have been a strange way to act, but not for Theodore Roosevelt. He was the 26th president of the United States, and almost everything about him was unusual. I like that part. Let's keep that in mind. He was the 26th president of the United States, and almost everything about him was unusual. President Roosevelt, or Teddy, was full of energy. He didn't just hike. He boxed, wrestled, played tennis, and rode horses. Teddy liked to keep busy, and he liked to get things done. Once he set a goal, he wouldn't let anything stand in his way. That's why he liked his point-to-point -point walks. He set out from one point and went straight to another point. He didn't let anything force him off his path, not even the Potomac River. Here's something else we learned about Teddy. He didn't let anything force him off his path. 
not even that Potomac River. Hmm. That's another thing to keep in mind about Teddy Roosevelt. This section's called Good Timing. Teddy became president in 1901. He was the perfect man for the job, a new kind of president for a new country. He wanted to push the country in a different direction. Times were changing. The U.S. continued to grow. Settlers kept moving farther west. The country's leaders worried about problems inside the U.S. The nation stayed out of world events. Teddy wanted the U.S. to be a world leader. He wanted it to set big, important goals. Then he wanted the country to march towards its goals no matter what. He saw the future of the country as if it were a giant point-to-point -point hike, and he was the man to lead. Oh, here's Teddy setting those goals again, not just for himself, but now for the whole entire country, and he wants us to march toward those goals no matter what. How did Teddy get to be the way that he was? Why did he make the choices he made? To find the answers, you have to go back to the time when Teddy was just beginning his life. Let's do that. Chapter 2, Teddy's Busy Boyhood. Remember that question at the end of Chapter 1? How did Teddy get the way he was? Why did he make the choices he made? Hmm. Take a look at this, these pictures. Here's Teddy's father, Theodore, and Teddy's mother, Martha. How do you think Teddy got the way he was? Why did he make the choices he made? What do you think? Tell your partner. Hmm, those are some good predictions. Let's read and find out. When Teddy was a little boy, his nickname was Teddy. Later on, people would call him Teddy, but he never liked that name. Teddy lived in New York City. The Roosevelt family had lived there for hundreds of years. Teddy's father was Theodore Roosevelt Sr. He had strong ideas about how people should act. He believed that everyone should work hard. He also believed he had a duty to help others, including those less fortunate. Teddy's mother, Martha, was from Georgia. She was known for her great beauty and gentleness. She loved art and music. People called her by her nickname, Mitty. Teddy was born on October 27, 1858. When he was two, a terrible war, war started in the U.S., the Civil War. It was a war fought mostly between northern and southern parts of the U.S. Mitty was a southerner. Her brothers fought in the war on the side of the south. Teddy Sr. was a northerner. He believed in the cause of the north. What should he do? He knew it would hurt Mitty if he fought against the south. So Teddy Sr. did not go to war. Instead, he paid another man to fight in his place. And he did work for the Northern Army, but didn't involve fighting. What did Teddy's father believe? Can you find that in the text? What did Teddy's father believe? Point to it. Did you point to this part? He believed that everyone should work hard. He also believed he had a duty to help others, including less fortunate. Maybe that's where Teddy got his ideas from. Mitty, it's, the text says that Mitty was a southerner and his father was a northerner. His mother was born in the south and his father was born in the north. And then remember, that's what it says the war was fought between the North and the South. And remember it says that Teddy's father didn't want to upset his mother. 
so he decided not to go to war and paid somebody else to do it instead. Let's finish this last sentence here. T.D. felt bad that his father stayed out of the war. He thought fighting was a duty. Years later, in another war, T.D. would jump at the chance to fight. But first, he had to grow up. A sickly kid. T.D. had two sisters, Anna and Corrine. She also had a younger brother, Elliot. All the Roosevelt children had health problems. Tedes were the worst. He had bad stomach and head pains. He also had asthma. People with asthma have trouble getting enough oxygen into their lungs. Nowadays, there are many medicines for people with asthma. But when Teddy was little, doctors couldn't do much to help. Check out the heading here. It says, a sickly kid. A detail that tells you about this section it tells you how much, how sick that T.D. was, or Teddy Roosevelt. He was a sickly kid. He had bad stomach pains, or stomach and head pains. And he also had asthma. Do any of you have asthma? Lucky for you, you have medicine to help you with that. Teddy Roosevelt wasn't so lucky. Nights were especially hard for the young boy. Then T when T.D. couldn't breathe, Teddy Sr. would take him for a fast carriage ride. His father would hold him tight as the horses galloped through the dark, empty streets. These rides seemed to help his lungs fill with fresh air. When T.D. was too sick to play, he sat and looked at books. Before he learned to read, he studied pictures. He loved looking at animals best. When he wasn't sick, T.D. was full of energy. It was hard for him to sit still. During trips to the country, he spent all day outdoors. He rode horses, swam, and climbed trees. He was always moving. What have we learned about Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt so far? Tell your partner. I hope you pointed to part of the text. Remember? He was so he was so sick to play. He couldn't even play. So when he liked to learn, he read, and he liked looking at animals. And did you talk about how he never stops moving? And all the things he liked to do, like ride horses and swim and climb trees? What a cool person he was. Animals everywhere. In the city, T.D. spent most of his time outside. Often he searched for unusual bugs and animals. He was very interested in studying them. The house was filled with his creatures. He kept snakes in the water pitchers. He kept a snapping turtle in the washroom. Once he tipped his hat to a family friend on a streetcar, out hopped two frogs. Imagine his friend's surprise. T.D. was interested in everything about animals. He cut apart dead animals to study their bones. He wanted to know what they ate and how long they lived. He drew pictures of birds and insects and described everything he saw. He wanted to be a naturalist, someone who studies plants and animals. As the years passed, T.D.'s health did not improve. He was still weak and sick. When he was 12, his father took him aside. Theodore, he said, you must make your body work. It is hard, dull work to make one's body, but I know you will do it. The young boy took the challenge. I'll make my body, he said. So his father built him a gym. T.D. exercised for several hours every day. He wanted to build up his chest and his arms. The hard work paid off. When he was ready for college, Teddy was strong and healthy. What 
are some things that we learned about Teddy on these pages? Turn and tell your partner. 